Hello and thank you all for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia says it is working to enhance Ethiopia's image through digital diplomacy. The ministry is giving trainings to the newly appointed ambassadors. Spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, Ambassador Dina Mufti, said the objective of the training is to invoice ambassadors on the very basic diplomatic issues. Goshu Melissa reports. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia is giving trainings to the newly appointed ambassadors on basic diplomacy and foreign policy. In an exclusive interview with ETV spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dina Mufti said the objective of the training is ambassadors to invoice on vital issues of diplomacy. The very objective of this training is actually to make invoice ambassadors familiar with the basic uh, diplomatic issues uh, and uh, in fact to alert them to in fact uh, deal with the current situations. Uh, the training has content. The content would include foreign policy, the very visions, missions and objectives of our foreign policy. In fact since these are the invoices who have come from practical areas and most of them are very much familiar with the policy of the country, it will be proper to remind them on the very content of the new the, the foreign policy. Dina also explained that the ministry is striving to enhance Ethiopia's image through digital diplomacy. On top of that, the, the digital diplomacy is also a crucial diplomacy which time has come for. Uh, apart from the conventional media, the social media is, is another sphere where uh, diplomats have to be versed ways and have to act as well. So uh, performance in the digital diplomacy, efficiency and proficiency in that sphere is also expected of our diplomats. Since this is the information age where informations flow very fast and the reach out is very, very critical and very, very important. So our diplomats also should be versed with the digital diplomacy as well. The other objective of the training is to make ambassadors clear with Ethiopia's relation to the rest of the world, Dina pointed out. Making them familiar with Ethiopia relations with different parts of the world. Um, they will be familiarized with Ethiopia relations with the neighboring countries and Africa. Uh, the very status of our, the current relationship uh, of Ethiopia with the neighboring countries as well as the African countries. They will be also made familiar with the relationship of Ethiopia with Asia and the Pacific, the Middle East, um, North America and Europe as well. Apart from this, they will be also briefed on the e relations with international organizations, namely regional organizations like the African Union and the international organizations like the United Nations. Really, what is Ethiopia's interest when it comes to its relations with the UN is considered. Ambassadors who represent Ethiopia are expected to loud Ethiopia's transboundary resources and urgent issues Ethiopia deals with. They will be exposed to the Vena Conventions. Um, apart from this, they will be also exposed to the transboundary resources. When we talk about transboundary resources, we mean uh, resources that cross the boundaries, like rivers and others. Uh, in this particular case, definitely we'll discuss with them about our issues related with the uh, Grand Renaissance Dam as well. And uh, apart from this, they will be also made familiar with the urgent and critical issues that Ethiopia deals with right now, like the, the, the process uh, of rehabilitation uh, that is taking place after maintaining the supremacy of law and order in the northern part of Ethiopia. Apart from the ambassadors, various sections of the societies in abroad have a role of promoting public diplomacy to secure national interest, Dina added. 
More than 800 Ethiopians living in the United States held a Zoom discussion on current national issues. Participants of the discussion were drawn from all states of the U.S. and included religious leaders, representatives of organizations, scholars, advocacy, and other groups. In a statement issued after the discussion, the participants denounced the wrong information being disseminated via social and mainstream media by supporters of TPLF groups to deceive the international community governments and international institutions. They agreed to join hands to counter the disinformation being released by these groups and to provide support to rehabilitate those who were displaced from Tigray and other parts of the country. They further denounced the wrong information being spread regarding the tripartite negotiation on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam GERD and pledged to provide financial support until the completion of the construction of the dam. At the end of the discussion, organized by the Ethiopian embassy in Washington, the participants also asked Sudan to withdraw its forces from Ethiopian land. Ethiopian ambassador to Sweden, Deriba Kuma, has conferred with Ambassador Helena Iraksen, Deputy Director General of the Department for Africa and the Middle East in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland and former ambassador to Ethiopia. The meeting focused on bilateral and regional matters of mutual interest to Ethiopia and Finland, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Their discussion also noted the importance of the upcoming visit of the Foreign Minister of Finland to Ethiopia, Pekka Havisto, under the mandate of the European Union. Ambassador Diriba briefed the Deputy Director General on the latest developments in the Tigray region, particularly the provision of humanitarian service. Ambassador Arksinen, on her side, stressed the importance of enhanced humanitarian service to those in need. News hour. A scholar from Center for African and Asian Studies at Addis Ababa University has said the current generation should overcome challenges as to build a democratic and prosperous country by learning from the victory of Adwa. In an exclusive interview with ETV English in connection with the Adwa victory, Dechasa Abbebe said, Adwa teaches invaluable lessons to the current generation. As to him, the present generation should redouble efforts to play share in building a democratic and prosperous nation. Kazahunjani reports. The history of Adwa is the incarnation of a battle to resistance to any form of humiliation. Ethiopians have demonstrated time and again that they value much more their personality and identity rather than anything else and they always prefer days to slavery, according to the Chasababa from Addis Ababa University's Center for African and Asian Studies. The Chasa also noted that Ethiopian patriots do not mind being poor or backward as long as they do not have have to trade with their freedom. The Ethiopians uh, could win, uh, or they totally defeated the Italians at the, the Battle of Adwa, uh, as far as my, my uh, historical knowledge is concerned. Uh, a number of factors were there behind this victory. Uh, the major one, the, the, the major one, even if there were a number of supporting uh, factors, the major one was the unity uh, that was prevailing among the Ethiopians. The unity, they, they taught us one people, or they, they moved, or, uh, shall I say, uh, go to the war uh, front, or went to the war front as one people. That does not mean there were not differences or discontents or frictions among the Ethiopians. At that particular moment, what matters was they, they gave priority to the, their, their motherland, the issue of def, uh, defending their motherland, and put aside their internal difference for the time being, uh, or put it for, for uh, tomorrow's as assignment, and they attempted to, to defend their, their motherland. I think that can be considered as the major factor for their, their victory, or the Zen Ethiopians. A number of supportive uh, factors might be there. 
you, we can take, for example, the, the leadership ability of the Zen, the Zen political elites, so including the emperor himself and his, his uh, wife or the emperors. Uh, and the way they, they mobilized the, the Ethiopians for that purpose can be taken as one, one factor. The Chasa further highlighted that the history of Adwa is a sign of the of all these thoughts and beliefs, emphasizing why it was all that unity, force, determination, and resolve to face hundreds of kilometers on foot with lots of luggage and provisions and face a very sophisticated armed force without any feeling of inferiority. Providing logistics, a number of things were, were done. Therefore, throughout all these activities, every Ethiopian had his or her contribution, either directly or indirectly, let alone uh, uh, the, the, the Ethiopians as human beings, even their, their animals had had great contribution. For example, crossing all the way from different parts of uh, Ethiopia to, uh, to Adwa, they, they had to uh, cross thousands of kilometers. Throughout all this, mm -hmm. Ethiopians had no uh, such modern transportation system. Mm -hmm. Ethiopians' way of life itself. All Ethiopians were part-time uh, army. Uh, whether they were uh, peasants, uh, traders, or uh, engaged in different, uh, shall I say, uh, livelihood, in such cases, or when uh, they thought that the country is in danger, all of them, I think, were mobilized for, for that purpose, I mean for defending their, their motherland. And the, the, the endurance they had also can be taken as another, another factor. It means the Ethiopians were living in, in a sort of, shall I say, entire poverty barefoot, uh, had, had no uh, such enough uh, provisions, and the like. That, is, uh, that was more or less their entire way of life. They used that for what purpose? Uh, I think, enduring all the challenges, uh, and went about thousands of kilometers and confront the Italians, could we? Most probably the, the geographical setup itself. He had good knowledge of the geography of the northern part of uh, Ethiopia. Uh, in, uh, According to the Chasa, the forefathers had shown great leadership ability, playing a significant role to defend the sovereignty of their motherland. A historian, Habib Mohammed, said that the victory of Adwa, in which all Ethiopians showed their practical unity and collaboration, is the initial point of Pan-Africanism. In an interview with ETV Languages, he noted that Ethiopian forefathers proved that they had good skills of leadership, coordination, and listening to each other. Emmanuel Jorge tells you more. The victory of Adwa is believed to be a symbol of freedom of black people worldwide. Whole Africa was highly initiated to struggle against colonization and gain their liberty back following the iconic victory of Adwa, taking a lesson out of it. In his stay with ETV language historian Habib Muhammad said that the Adwa victory has laid foundation of Pan-Africanism to strengthen the current linkage between African countries. <laughs> The Adwa victory has significantly motivated Africans to get rid of colonizers when they and their resources were abused by invaders. And victory has called the Pan African movement. In this regard, Adwa's role in sparking movements to regain freedom is not acknowledged internationally as it deserves. We all Ethiopians across the world have a responsibility to promote the history of Adwa victory and your significant role for freedom of the black people. He added that Ethiopians in Adwa did not only show their unity, but their good leadership and coordination skills. 
Later, Long Dirt, Ethiopian forefathers have assured Dirt they had good skills of leadership, coordination, and listening to each other. This generation should understand those skills are always important, and we all are ancestors. Large sacrifice and data to us in Adwa Wafrand for sovereignty of our great motherland, Ethiopia. The commemoration day of Adwa when we defeated invaders is not only a landmark of our invincibility but is also a pride and symbol of black people's freedom. Considering that there are some groups who do not want to see Ethiopia's prosperity, Habib underlined that all Ethiopians should continue their strong support to Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is the main weapon to fight against poverty. Meanwhile, a torch lighting ceremony was held here in Addis Ababa today, marking the official launching of the commemoration of the 125th anniversary of the victory of Adwa. The event, which was prepared by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, has also officially designated February as the month of Adwa today. The occasion, which also featured other events, will beef up the unity of Ethiopians, it was noted. Ethiopia will celebrate its landslide victory of Adwa through the month, commemorating the victory as the triumph of not only Ethiopians, but also that of the black people across the globe. Policy Matters is a conversation platform which aims to provide reasoned analysis and context to the activities, reforms, and policies of the federal government of Ethiopia. Exploring various reforms the government is undertaking, the conversation platform aspires to enable nuanced and informed understanding. Um, the question being um, doing it both at the same time, both the privatization of Ethiopia Telecom as well as uh, letting two new operators come in. Uh, don't you think that's too much to bite? Uh, yes, this is a, a huge enterprise. Yes, it takes a huge toll on us, uh, but it's also so important, so critical for the future of this country that it was with, with, with those words um, doing it this way. So having said that, let me ask you this. Since you represent technically um, the Ministry of Finance, so I'm going to put this question to you. What are you looking at when it comes to this sector, the telecom sector? Is there going to be resources allocated? If we have to make a difference in the Ethiopian economy, the most important thing we must do is to make sure ideas are properly financed for execution. That's what we've been lacking in this country. Welcome back again. A delegation from the Interreligious Council of Ethiopia has traveled to Tigray Regional State to discuss with and provide humanitarian assistance to those in need. The delegation, composed of religious leaders, elders, and members of the council, will make a three-day visit and meet with members of the community and stakeholders. The delegation will hold discussions on the challenges faced during the law enforcement operation held in Tigray Regional State, particularly damage caused to churches. Moreover, the delegation will meet with heads of churches and elders, as well as regional government officials and security forces.